Hello, how are you mates? It's Ex Benedict Nguanya for Hollywood Bets Sports Blog and uh, it's today's and in today's edition of Legends Corner we hang out with the legendary Gavin Stability Unit Lane, former Orlando Pirates, Morocco Solos and Amazon Defender. It's yeah, how's it? How are you, man? Good to see you, man. Yeah, yeah very yeah. well, very well. Thank you. It gives me great pleasure to talk to a legend of your, yeah, of your caliber. Ah, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And it's always nice to be recognised as a legend. So yeah, mm -hmm. very nice. Thank you, legend. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, one thing that blows my mind about you is the fact that you scored um, a goal in the Parrots in Parrots' uh, Champions League triumphant uh, campaign in 1995. I remember Parrots were two one down um, in the first leg of the final. And you scored the goal that made it 2 2. And then Jerry scored it the one that you got away from there. Which goal is more famous? Well, obviously, <laughs> obviously, Jerry's going to take the credit for, for, for all of that. And um, um, obviously, it was, I mean, it was the highlight of a career, really. I mean, you know, going to Ivory Coast where we had no chance, everyone wrote us off. The president of Ivory Coast said the Monday was going to be a public holiday because they were 100% sure that they were going to win and they're going to celebrate. So obviously, looking at the goals, that yeah, obviously Jerry's goal was important. But you know, we, we all contributed throughout the whole tournament, and um, a lot of goals were scored. You know, in in in, um, in Uganda, we scored it. Also, late uh, equaliser there for us to go through. And so yeah, so but each goal is is, is important as each other. So yeah, so we can't really say who was best. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was all good fun. And um, the late Mark Bachelor. Mm -hmm. um, Claimed that he helped me out with that equalising goal at, at when we played at Ellis Park. He said because he challenged the keeper, and that's why I got the header in. So, so yeah, so yeah, good fun, good days, eh? Good days. Yeah. And yeah, I know, I know that you were sharing a room with uh, the late Mark Bachella. How was he as a person? Yeah, what a champion guy. I mean, he was a really, really lekker guy, fun guy. Um, as I said to you in the, the interview they did with me um, after his death. Um, I'll bet you he was always like extravagant, and but you know, I mean, he had this blonde white hair, and he'd come driving around in this blooming uh, pink um, BMW, and that was bad. But yeah, he was a hell of a lekker guy, and um, you know, just sad to to hear of, of his passing. But yeah, mm. absolutely exciting. And that team had characters. I mean, the, there was Eddie Motale, there was Mark Fish. Apparently, Mark Fish was not, and Eddie was a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very true. I mean, the changing was always hilarious because Eddie Motale is like one of the funniest guys around, and he's. He's always got jokes and talking. And another funny guy is, is that people don't know about is Bernard the Shoesy. Mm. Shoes, he's Shoes a shoes the shoes. He's, he's, he's a he's a character as well. So we had a lot of characters and funny guys and some guys that were quiet and then obviously the naughty guys, Fishy, myself and a few of the other guys. Yeah, but yeah, we all all had all had good fun. It was a great team that we had together there. What are, what are some of the things just to get up to? Like funny and what's ah, it? You know what I mean? That, that when, you, when, you go on, when you go on tour or even if you travel from Johannesburg to Durban and that, um, you, after the match you'd always go out and you know the, 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 the guys, it was always funny because all the, the black players would go to the, 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 the varsities and all things like that, you know what I'm saying? Looking for ones. We're looking for, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then and some girl? And, uh, yeah, and then like the guys like, like Fishy, Batch, myself, like, way you can see when he was in the side and we used to obviously go into say Cape Town we'd go to the waterfront there. Eddie Matoli would always come with us. Mm. Because he always wanted to hang around with us, but all other guys would go wherever they wanted to go. And yeah, so so yeah, so it was all good fun. But uh, as I said, the, the, the team spirit of the amongst those players that we had was great. I mean, even if it was guys on the bench, as soon as a guy came from from the bench to play, mm -hmm. you knew that he would do a great job. So that's that's how close and knit we were. So I mean, not like nowadays you've got fifty players in the squad. You know, I mean yeah. we, had, we had twenty odd and, and, and it, it, it was closely knitted team. So I think that's why we, we did so well because we we wanted to work for each other. And the rumor has it that you were one of like a few white people who go to black townships to so to speak. You'd go to Tembisa to yeah. visit Janus Kosana. You would, uh, and also, oh, speaking of Jerry, like yeah. I've, I've heard stories about you know teams using Muti, yeah. and they say <laughs> you're you're a white guy, yeah, but you were the first, Always. you were one of the first people to say, okay, they making us to they making us bath yes. into this bathtub, yeah, and you might be itchy and stuff, but I'm gonna do it first. Yeah, they making us drink this Muti, it's bitter, but I'm gonna drink first. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's you know the Muti story is always uh, I know I know Dr. Alvin Kosa he wouldn't want to, to, to tell it but I've told the story many times with 
what we did and yeah we did do Muti and um, yeah I was I was never ever afraid of it or anything or mm -hmm. things like this because you know it's, it's the belief of the the black culture so we came in as players and you know you do what you what you must do so I don't know if it helped us win matches or do anything but, you won. but I did it I, I did it I did it and um, yeah I would always tell Lawrence Ngobani the late Lawrence Ngobani I would say to him when we had a bath and washing it I said please wake me up first because I'll dive in there first I don't worry they're mm -hmm. washing all stuff and all that kind of stuff and then so we used to call it now, we used to close your eyes if you're playing, like whoever we played against, you would close your eyes and they would rub stuff on your one eye, on your eyes, so you close your eyes and say, see me now, see me no more. See me you now, know, see me no more. more. So yeah, and then you open your eyes and let pirates, let pirates see and win. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So those are some of the rituals and things like that that we did. But yeah, I mean, um, I, I, I didn't mind doing the Muti story at all or anything like this. And, um, um, yeah, it's, it's part of the part of the, the culture and the nature, and so we, we did it. I know some guys. I mean, we had a great player, Etienne Sundu, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't do it. Eh? And um, he, what? I promise you, he wouldn't do it. And um, a few times he got left out of the squad, eh? and because of not doing Muti, because and the one time I know the one time he didn't do it, and he didn't, he missed two easy goals. Oh, and they blamed him for not. They blamed him for not to do taking the mooty. <laughs> so we had to go and speak to him and tell him because you know he was from Zaire. Yeah, I mean they do lots of mooty, all that stuff. And he was, or he said, man, he doesn't do it. He doesn't believe in it. But eventually we sort of worked out. So let's just do it. This there's nothing, no cutting or nothing like that that they want to do to you. You know what I mean? It's just rubbing stuff on you. So do it. And then we, we did it, and he scored a goal. So. It was a little bit of yeah, in the changing, you know. So what I mean? wax, huh? yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I must get some of that mooty again, eh? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, for, the current, for, for the current squad. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Um, and uh, you, you were such a great athlete, but people often remind you about the missed penalties. <laughs> the one that sticks out for me is the one you missed in the Bob Save uh, yeah. in the Bob Save game against Sundance. Sundance. You just was that was like a rugby kick. Uh, you know, you know what happens is that it's, it's, yeah. it's quite it's quite hilarious because that's when people see me that I go go to garages or go somewhere and the guys yeah. look at me. Hey, stability, how's it? How are you? Mm -hmm. And they say, Hey, I remember you missed the penalties. That's all they remember. That's all right. That's what people remember you for. So, yeah. so what I said, I said to them, listen, guys, at training sessions, all the guys. Hey, you come, you take them. All of them want to take penalties. Mm -hmm. All that place. Hey, they're putting in top corner here, top here, bottom here. We're in the game. We play the game. Mm -hmm. Hey, the 90 minutes is up. You go extra time. Extra time is up. You look at the round on the, on the, the player, your players. They've all got their boots and socks off already. Really? They don't want to take penalties they because they're scared. They so they're scared. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'm not going to be scared, so I take the penalties. You know? So I scored some, I missed some. But that's part of life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was, yeah, I mean, it's. it's, it's one of those things I'm remembered for for missing penalties, but I did score quite a few other goals. So hey, like, okay. us, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially against Sundowns as well. I remember my yeah. first game, my first game actually for Pirates, one of my first games, my second game because it was a Wizard Spectacular. Mm -hmm. So we play, you know, you play a game in the morning and then you play a game in the afternoon. Yeah, I remember that. So I play, we played Swallows in the morning, we won that, we played Chiefs in the afternoon. And so it was my second game for Pirates, for, the, mm -hmm. for playing a, a game for Pirates. And we went to penalty shootout and I was the fifth penalty taker. Mm. And I took it and I smashed it over the bar and I thought, oh my goodness, <laughs> how am I going to get out of this F&B stadium because the fans are going to kill me. It's like full of packs. And Doc, Doc Kamala came up and he took the next penalty, mm -hmm. but he hit the blue underside of the bar and it went in. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh gee, I'm dead yet because the, the crowd is going to go, you know what it's like, you know, the big derbies and things like this. Thank goodness I walked out of the F&B stadium and you have all the supporters, hey Gavin, well done, because I didn't have my nickname then, I wasn't stability unit or anything yet. Hey Gavin, well done, great games and stuff. Oh, shoot, that's okay. Oh. <laughs> so the fans forgave me there. So, mm. so yeah, so, um, yeah, but I must say that the fans were unbelievable. I mean, I had, I had like, like 19 years at Atlanta Pirates and sure, it was really, really, with the fans, the way they were, the way they treated us players were great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good. Absolutely excited. Who's yeah. the best striker you've ever faced as a defender? Oh, ah. Because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because yeah. um, I put out a tweet. I said, yeah. uh, what, what question do you want to ask Kevin Lane? Yes. People said, ask him about Daniel Mudawu. Oh, he used to terrorize you. You know what he did? He was a, he was a nippy little fast little player. And mm -hmm. often I would like, because I was walking Rafa Chuku there all the time. Oh, because yeah, the big, the big, he, 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 was, was, yeah. he was big and strong. Eh? Yeah, yeah, that's one thing I must say. He was very big and strong. So you got this big guy holding the ball up, you're trying to get it like this, mm -hmm. and then you, then you got Daniel Manbush, Medal, 
he would just come and lick the ball off you. So if you weren't paying attention all the time, because he was very quick and nippy, mm -hmm. you get it. Once or twice he robbed the ball off me, and then the one time I did school. So um, yeah, um, uh, Madao was definitely because his, his size of statue. You know what I mean? He was a small, yeah. thin, small guy. You know what I mean? But yeah. Very quick and pacey. But yeah, I mean, I, I played against some great guys. Poland and Glania is, is one of them. A great player, um, former singer. You know, Sean Bartlett, Mark Williams. Rafael Chukri, as I said, he was he was one of the biggest guys. It was very difficult to mark because mm. he had legs like this. I promise you, he was like two chunks and a really, really, really good player. But yeah, I, I played against a lot. Even Batch, to play against Batch, you know, Batch was always elbows and, and everything like that. So so it was difficult. So I can't really, I mean, there's a whole lot of guys that I, I, I can't remember the name, but all great players we played against, you know what I mean? So definitely, uh, that, yeah, it was in that, that time there were some, there were some great, great strikers. So. Mm. Tommy Soka on Twitter is asking if you're related to Ryan Ray from Highlands Park. No, not at all. You don't know that person? No. Ryan Ray? Yeah. No, not no. at all. Okay, Tommy, <laughs> there you have it. Okay, steps. Let's talk about the current Pirates team. Uh, we haven't won a trophy since 2014, but we're playing so well. What do you think is lacking? Yeah, um, it, as I said to you earlier on, uh, to me personally, um, I thought we were women doing exceptionally well last year. We got to finals, we got to second in the log or the league and everything like this. And then the start of this year, we just do a few little changes, everything. We're still playing good soccer, mm. but there's just not, there's something missing there. And, and I personally believe it is that all the squads, not just Pirates, you've got all the teams all over in the country, you've got about 40 to 50 players. And it's so difficult, I think, as a coach, because now you've got. 50 players coming to training session where in our days when we played maybe we had 24 20 odd players so the coaches could work on the skills and another skill, the, the strengths and weakness of each individual player where now when you're coming to a training session you, you've got coaches you've got i think you've got seven or eight different coaches for different things so they take in a player some players over there mm -hmm. to go work on them then you come here how is you as a, as a main head coach or know who, who to, how to work, which is the strength of this player, which is the weakness. So I, I personally believe it. I know it's modern times and everything, like if things change and more players are better because this and that. But personally, I think I think that you need a smaller base of players to work around with and work on that. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, when we played in our days, if someone got injured, the guy who was coming from the bench, you knew that that guy would fill this position up mm -hmm. too. To the right potential. We, I think, we're missing now. If you take, if you take a play off, or a player gets injured, or he gets a yellow card, or something like that, you draw him off. You bring a player on, or you're not bringing life for life, or, or same for same type of thing. I don't know. That's me personally. But yeah, so a lot of coaches as well. And this, that's that's another thing. I mean, you got you as the head coach now. You have got like another seven other coaches underneath you. Um, yeah. you, this one's got easy because you all got your own ideas. I've got my own way of thinking, you've got your own way of thinking. Yeah. So now you've got five different coaches and you say, okay, let's, let's have a meeting. Okay, man, this is our starting lineup. You maybe sit there for two, three hours discussing it because this one likes that player, this one doesn't like this one. So it's, to me, it's, I mean, before you had your head coach and your assistant coach mm. and you guys talk and you say like this, okay, this is the squad we want, this is what we're going to do and you're playing mm. like that. Where now I think there's a lot of confusion mm. where everyone wants to put their own little bit in because that's if you're a coach you want to put your bit in which is yeah. you must do that because that's why you get paid. But that's me personally, that's the way I feel. I think the, 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 the current squads, not just not just for pirates, the current squads for all the teams, they're huge, man. I mean there's yeah. like fifty players on, on the on the books of like sundowns and you know and there's some good players that aren't even playing. Mm. Which makes it even sadder. You know what I mean? You've got some players sitting on the bench that they, they can't catch a game. Where before you used to have, you know, everyone was all the good players were playing that. I mean, some guys are happy to sit there because the money they make. And they're making mm. tons of good money nowadays. Eh? Mm. So that's my personal opinion. Mm. Speaking of money now, let's talk about something very important, which is retirement. Most of the players after retirement, they go broke. Uh, they can't sustain themselves. You're one of the few players who are well off, so to speak. Uh. <laughs> um, how did you figure it out and what do you think um, can be done for the current crop of players so that they don't uh, you know, suffer the same fate as their predecessors? Yeah, no, definitely. I think, I think that is very, very important, especially for the, 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 the players coming, coming through the, the, the system now, especially young guys. And I think, I think what I've heard, I haven't been too much in touch with, with the teams and everything, but what I, what I do hear is that the guys are explaining to, to the younger guys that are coming into the team 
how to try sort out their financial means and get some education behind you or do some some other type of so you know when you finish soccer that you've got a mount saved saved somewhere so when you retire you know you're either going to go into this line of, of work or that line of work so i, I do hear rumbles that these things doing programs being done for all players like that i'm not too sure in our days it was was like okay well here's your money and do what you want to do with it you know and, I mean? and how did you pay it out yeah it was, it's, it's obviously difficult i mean um, mm -hmm. friends of mine always said to me hey Gabe, listen yeah you've got to look after yourself because you know, your soccer career is only this short compared to your lifespan you know what i mean yeah and um yeah so um Tough times are tough everywhere, and everyone knows about it. Like this, but if you just got the right guidance and help in those days, you know, as we, as we know, a lot of our players in our time made lots of money overseas, came back, and yeah. then they, they broke. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's just the way of living and how to control it. So, but I do hear that they are yeah. the clubs are now genuinely trying to help out players to work that they, they know that they've got some kind of a settlement or some kind of financial backing mm. when they finish. They know they can go into this educated. They can go do this or can do that. So, which is good, which is really, really good to hear. You know what I mean? So, yeah. why, why, why did you decide to like do, or should I say, to venture in another line of business instead of like sticking in soccer, maybe doing something coaching or directing? Yeah, I mean, coaching? I would, I would, I would love to. I mean, I would love to. I mean, I would love to do it. No, definitely, soccer's in my blood. I mean, but you know what happens when I, I, I move back, I moved down here to to play for Amazulu and the club Barker, mm -hmm. um, and then I had a Achilles, um, well, both of my Achilles, I had, so I was. Uh, it's virtually like stopped my career, you know what I mean? I had an operation, so I was in uh, for, for many months in a wheelchair, and my legs like this. And, um, and then I became assistant coach under Clive, and then um, still politics, what it was like. I wasn't allowed to sit on the bench because you can't have two white guys on the bench. This was, no. the, this was the Amazulu fans, okay? Mm. And um, so they I wanted went, more Amazulu. They, they wanted, yeah. So, and then, <laughs> um, Mark, and, you know, I forget his name, Mark, so he was our office manager. He used to sit on the bench and I would sit up in the crowd or, or wherever like this. So, um, and I really generally I enjoyed, it, enjoyed the coaching, you know, obviously under working under Clark Barker, which was great. I worked under Ronald and, and all things like this. Um, Walter Outman came and coached here for a while as well, worked underneath him. So there was quite a lot of co coaches, uh, Ramadan, he also coached Amazulu down here. And, um, and then they, the mayor's office called me, and it was just before the 2010 World Cup. Mm -hmm. And they said, what they want to do is that they want to, Sugar Ray was there, and uh, Joel Fire, all of them. What they want to do is they want to amalgamate, go to all the, the white schools, mm -hmm. the black schools, the Indian schools, and the colored schools. So we had all different guys from different mm -hmm. uh, backgrounds. backgrounds and different everything races, like this, yeah. different races and everything like that. And we sat, we had a meeting, we said, okay, I then went to go to the white schools. I went to Dr. Trevor Cowie up in um, Westville Boys High and, and all that kind of stuff. Said, this is, this is what we would like to do. Boys from the age of 15, 16, 17 to get a, a, a whole youth in the town to get a, a tournament game. So we play, you don't go into the townships, you don't. We play, we we're going to organize to play at um, Kings Park and have matches there. And then the guys that were part of it, as I said, Joel Fire, Sugar Ray, myself, there's a few other guys. And we think like this, we would then talent spot them or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and then say we'll, we'll get so many guys from here, so many, put them into a boarding school or into a housing complex in Durban, and they would, those guys would train twice a day with us. Mm -hmm. So we would get, and, and that's how it started. It started off like this, and I think it went for two months, and then it, there was a guy up in, in Peter Maritzburg. He said, no, there's inappropriate funds being spent or something like this, and they shut it down. Yeah. And um, because obviously they wanted to get the whole thing in the town. I mean, because there's so many good players that come out of, out of this province, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's some of them you don't even see in different areas. So we were trying to get all of that in. That was, that was a, the, the thinking behind that whole scheme that we did. This was, it was about 2008, 2009, and I got involved with that. And then within two months, and I just thought, no, no, no. Football is there's, there's too much politics yeah. involved in this nonsense. Even even <laughs> even at Amazulu, um, uh, Cesar Bakisha, when he owned Amazulu, he's still a good friend of mine. But the day we went to go play, we went to Joba to play Kaiser Chiefs. I was because I wasn't allowed on the bench because of white guys, oh, you know. White so, coach. So, yeah, so I sat in the in the in the, in the, the players' lounge, and next thing I see a club walking looking at the game. It's like my phone and everything like this. Mr. Bakisha sitting here in his house in Lelusia, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
with some friends watching the game, mm -hmm. telling us that we must take off Robson Chicho with our left back at that mm -hmm. stage. We we're losing one nil only. It was just before half time. I'm going to take some Chicho off and put a strike on. So Clive is going. So what happens? Uh, Sister Pikicha phones you, phones you with the crowd, on, and yes. then you tell Clive. Yes. Or he phones Clive. He phones Clive mm. and tells us we must make the change. So half time, we yeah. come down, we meet, meet with Clive. I said, I don't think we need to change it. Mm. I said, we have only one nil down, we play, and we play well. Mm. No, no. Next thing, if we don't make the change, if we don't make the change, we fail. Yeah. So ten minutes into second half. We take Robson Chicho off, they beat us 4 0. Where do all the goals come from? That space there. Mm. So the Monday morning we come here like this, Mr. Kisha says, You're all fired. So Alpha, Alpha, Alpha and Tuna, Alpha, remember Alpha and Tuna? Yeah, yeah, he, he was, a, he was a, yeah, also a big. He said, But um, Mr. Chairman, why are you firing Gavin? Because Gavin was not involved in, yeah. in the whole. And then really, what he did, you follow his instructions. We followed his instructions. We yeah. lost four 0 no. All the goals coming from that, that side where Robson would have been, mm -hmm. and I just then thought, no. So then, then, then we got fired. Okay, we got fired. And then, mm -hmm. and those days you had a contract, but they didn't give it. They didn't worry about your contract. They just said, well, yes, you pay. Thank you, goodbye. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, no, I've got, I've got, a, I've got a wife, and I've got two young boys. I said, there's no way I can, I can come in there. That's, that's when I moved on to different directions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, and, and life, life, life in other businesses is strange. That's, well. that's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Construction, so, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Construction. Yeah. 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 Painting companies. So, I do painting and renovations. Yeah. So yes, yeah. Nice. Thank, Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Pleasure. Thanks, my man. No worries, mate.